pounds weed out pot from cops priorities welcome back to good news next week everybody i'm james evan Pilato for mediamonarchy.com with some of the ways that we are winning we've got that story plus delaying the kratom ban but first police complaints drop 93 percent after deploying body cameras this story tweeted using hashtag good news next week by our friend at ray vahey a study from cambridge university documents an immense drop in complaints against police officers when their departments began using body cameras but even more surprising is that the data suggests everyone was on their best behavior, whether the cameras are present or not. The data was collected in seven police departments in the UK and US and represents over 1.4 million hours logged by 1,847 officers in 2014 and 2015. The researchers published their data two weeks ago in the journal Criminal Justice and Behavior. Officers were randomly assigned to wear or not wear cameras week by week. About half would be wearing them at any given time and had to keep them on during all encounters. Now, we've talked about a lot of studies on Good News next week, and there's a lot of ways to pick these apart. But honestly, this is, again, I often talk about Jello Biafra of the Dead Kennedys. I've got an old sticker on a stool here that I've had for well over a decade, and something he talked about, again, this would be very pre-9-11, a camcorder truth jihad. The idea being, tape cops everywhere. You can look at this report in the PDF form. They call it Contagious Accountability, a global, multi-site, randomized, controlled trial on the effect of police body-worn cameras on citizens' complaints against the police. The other thing worth noting, meanwhile, not one NYPD officer is wearing a body camera. Our cover story on this week's Good News Next Week, and this is episode 36 for the week of October 10th, 2016. Again, I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonica.com. I'm glad you're joining us for some solutions-oriented stories. That's a spinoff from my long-running series with my buddy James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. Our cover story this week tweeted by our friend at Sean Cathcart. Towns weed out pot from cops priorities. Community groups across the country are urging police departments to deprioritize marijuana enforcement, arguing that pursuing criminal charges for small amounts of the drug, it's a plant, wastes both taxpayer money and law enforcement resources and disproportionately targets blacks. Now, you could get rid of the taxes and get rid of the law enforcement and we'd all be a lot better off. This story is actually coming out of North Carolina, and they note that the Durham City Council, for example, recently asked the city manager and police chief to look at ways on how to pull back the enforcement against small amounts of marijuana. I love seeing the stories here in Portland as we've, of course, completely recreationalized and super taxed marijuana here in Oregon, just like they've done my neighbor to the north in Washington State. I love seeing the stories come out about the dogs, the drug dogs. Well, what are they going to do? They're going to get to do something else better and that they were basically fired from ruining people's life over having, of course, a plant. Our final story is another pushback against the statists. That's pretty much all three stories this week. Absolutely, because it's about personal freedom. Freedom might be ugly and scary sometimes, but I will never stop believing in the right for consenting adults to do whatever they want to themselves. <laughs> Our final story this week notes that following massive public pushback, the feds are delaying that very controversial Kratom ban. Of course, cannabis still Schedule 1. Kratom's addition to the Schedule 1 now been delayed. It appears a intensely negative public reaction caused the feds to temporarily halt their Schedule 1 designation of Kratom. On October 4th, the DEA announced it was delaying the ban at the hest of congressional lawmakers who wanted to prolong the public comment period. A massive online movement, which included petitions and feverish social media activity, effectively communicated the extent to which Kratom has beneficial medicinal value for thousands of people. In less than a month, the Kratom community mobilized hundreds of thousands of people to share positive testimonials and to denounce the draconian ban. See what happens when everybody kind of gets together and pushes back against the state? We have massive success, and that is a solution, and that is some of the ways that we are winning. Some of our other stories using hashtag good news next week. Our buddy Brock West noted that Iceland found all nine banksters guilty in their market abuse case. Our friend Eric Moshe noted that Romanian shelter has given paraplegic dogs love, care, and wheelchairs. 
And our friend Morgan Lesko at Wiki World Order noted an Australian farm has become the first to grow vegetables in the desert using only sun and seawater. And finally, our friend at Bo Boi, it fills my heart. Thanks, people like myself and James Corbett, for inspiring him to get involved and make changes happen. You can't just be bitching on the internet and not doing anything about it. you got to build and create and learn our way forward. So Bo Boi and his friends in Iowa have actually started High Prairie Produce, and you can see some of the ways they're making positive changes at highprairieproduce.org, and a huge thanks to him and everyone else who shares some of the ways that we are winning using hashtag good news next week. This has been your Good News Next Week episode for the week of October 10th, 2016. Again, I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonica.com reminding you, as always, my friends, like Jello Biafra says, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care.